Good thir Wednesday morning. This is a, 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 the 33rd week. Uh, this again is Luke's gospel. This is a, this is tells you that we have to love actively, not cautiously, not in a cowardly manner. I'll show it to you. It's a tough text. He says, whatever God gives you, you got to use it. And you have to do it with a boldness. See, well, I'll read it to you. While people were listening to Jesus speak, he proceeded to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem. And they thought that the kingdom of God would appear there immediately. He said, a nobleman went off to a distant country to obtain the kingship for himself and then to return. He called 10 of his servants and gave them 10 gold coins. And he told them, engage in trade with these until I come, until I return. Those were our gifts, okay? our life and our gifts. His fellow citizens despised him, however, and sent a delegation after him to announce, we don't want this man to be our king. But when he, that's a kicker line. That's talking about the Jews, actually, in this context. He's telling the Gentiles, you'll be okay, but you still got to put up. You still have to live the life. Watch what he says. But when he returned upon obtaining the kingship, he had the servants called to whom he gave, uh, had given the money to learn what they did with it. What, what had they gained by trading? The first came forward and said, Sir, your gold coin has earned you 10 additional ones. He replied, Well done, good servant. You have been faithful in this very small matter. Take charge of 10 cities. And the second came and reported, Your gold coin has earned you five more. And he said to him, You take charge of five cities. Then the other servant came and said, Sir, here is your gold coin. I kept it stored away in a handkerchief. But I was afraid. But I was afraid of you because you are a demanding man. You take up what you didn't lay down. You harvest what you didn't even plant. He said to him, with your own words, I condemn you, you wicked servant. You knew I was a demanding man taking up what I didn't lay down and harvesting what I didn't plant. Why did you not put my money in a bank? Then on my return, I would have collected it with interest. And to those standing by, he said, take the gold coin from him. Give it to the servant who has 10. But they said, sir, he's got 10. He replied, I tell you, to everyone who has more will be given. But from the one who has not, who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Now, as for those enemies of mine who didn't want me to be their king, bring him here. Let's slay him before me. Well, he plays rough, doesn't he? After you said, he proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. I think that story of the servant, it's twofold. The ones who rejected the king, okay? All right? All right. And the one who didn't act it, I think, probably at Luke's time in that context, is talking about the Jews. Either they didn't make use of what they were given, that's the servant who buries it, or they, uh, they betrayed him. See? Who everyone has more, so he's really talking to the Gentiles. I think Luke is reaffirming that they are, um, they are the ones who are now, they're the ones who were given the faith that the 10 coins, in the, and they returned it, they brought it back, see? Okay. But he's, I think, going after the, those who rejected Christ. That's the ones, you know, crucified him. The Pharisees, the scribes and the Pharisees. I think that's who he was referring to. But also those who did not, who had the coin and didn't, and didn't use it. Maybe who had the Old Testament, who had the great, the law, but did not use it, did not see Christ did not advance. I don't know that, but I'm thinking that. And of course, it's just, a, a, we're all, most of us, anybody who's listening to this thing probably is a, is a Christian, and therefore am I. Why would you not, be, why would you be listening to things, well, especially for me, okay? We were given the faith. Well, what have we done with the faith? See, I think when I, the, and the gifts we have that God gave us, both in themselves, I almost think humanistically and naturally, but also faithfully through the faith, through our belief. I think, what, and I think this is very concrete. What are the coins God gave us? For the vast majority of those of you who are listening to me, it's your families and your, your professional lives and your families and your friends, the people of your life. 
How did you love them? Did you love them well? Did you do the things you were called to do? Did you do them well? Or merely passively? That would be the one guy who did not pass. Maybe the guy who doesn't do anything with the coin. Nobody does the same as everyone else. Look, one guy gets 10, another guy gets five, meaning they, part, they made better use of it, okay? But they made use of it. But then the guy who doesn't do anything, let alone the rebels, the guys who reject the good, okay? They get creamed. That's probably the ultimate condemnation. The, red, the rebels, the people who have rejected it. In this case, we rejected the faith. That's a high price to pay. But it's not rejecting the faith, it's attacking the faith. We don't want you to be our king. That would be the militant atheist, or the mil in this case, in this exact case, could be the militant Jew. But I think in Luke, it could have been the pagan Romans who are attacking the faith. We do not want Christ to be our king, our emperor. We have an emperor, Caesar, something like that. See? In the end, you know, Christianity triumphed over Rome. It saved Rome and from itself. I don't know, I'm just dancing around thinking about this text. I think when we when we have to face upon our death, when we face God, I don't think he's going to ask, did you keep your nose clean? Did you keep the commandments? He's going to say, I think, did you love the people I gave you? Did you, did you love actively? Did you parlay the coins? Did you, did you profit the world? Is the world richer because, is the world richer? Is the kingdom of God richer because you existed? Hey, did you make a difference? I love the line in, in Plato, actually, about 400 years before the time of Christ, when in one of the later writings, uh, Socrates is asked, what is it to exist? And he says, to make a difference and to have a difference made. I believe it's in the sophist to, to uh, make a difference and have a difference made. And I think when we reach the end of time, the end of our lives, when we face Christ, I think he's going to ask us, did you make a difference? And he's going to say, well, did you do it? What did you do with the life I gave you and the people of your life? What did you do with the gifts I gave you? Well, I kept them. I mean, I didn't do I didn't spoil it. I didn't, I didn't, well, I'll show you an example, okay? Just to say, well, I kept my nose clean. I never stepped out on my family. And I, Did you love your children well? Did you love your spouse well? Not that you keep your nose clean. That guy with the one coin didn't do anything wrong. He just didn't do anything right. Did you love well? What I've seen in whatever pastoral counseling I've done over the last 50-something years, the thing that has killed more marriages is not infidelity, it's lack of fidelity. And I don't mean by that infidelity, lack of being actively faithful, actively loving your spouse, actively loving your children, not passively keeping your nose clean. That's the one coin, but enriching your spouse so that your, that your spouse's life is richer because you are present and you have loved them. Your children are enriched, not only biologically and physically and maybe in terms of education, but have you so loved them that they are richer from within. I think it's got an answer. I got an answer for the, I'll give you an example here. I've got an answer for the 54 years, 53 years I've been at, 52 years I've been at St. Tim's and St. Mark's. You know, even though 13 of those years were back and forth from Louisville, I've been there for four generations. I got an answer for those four generations. I think Christ can say very clear to me, what'd you do in that parish? What difference did you make? I got an answer for that. As a passionist, I have to answer what kind of a passionist were you? As a scholar and a philosopher, what kind of a teacher did you make a difference? And was it a difference that will keep making itself? Did you hand on an enrich life? Hmm? That's the truth. I don't think he's going to ask me, did you miss mass on Sunday? He's going to ask me, did I make a difference? My way. He's going to ask you, did you make a difference? Your way. Our way. And that's something that's a different way of shaping your conscience, isn't it? Examining, did I make a difference? Have I loved well? 
those who God gave me? Or did I just take the coin and put it in a handkerchief? Did I bring back 10 new coins or five? Did I make a difference?